Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. As the, the chair of SIPSI UA committee, I would like to welcome you to the special occasion. We are honored to have Adrian Ketchpo, uh, SIPSI president, visit the region. His presence underscores the significance of collaborative efforts in advancing sustainability. So let's dive into a quick chat with Adrian, exploring insights on sustainability, engineering, and SIPSI's impact post COP28. So thank you, Adrian, for joining us on this journey toward a positive and sustainable future. And my first question to you is, what role does SIPSA see for building services, engineering, in driving economic growth? And can you discuss the financial benefits of investing in sustainable engineering solutions? Thank you, Imran, and it's a pleasure to be here. SIBSI is recognised globally for its reputation in promoting excellence and championing best practice to drive improved performance, safety, health and sustainability in the built environment. We have over 22,000 members in 95 countries and our knowledge and guidance has been downloaded in every single country in the world. So far as economic growth our members specify and oversee the installation of new net zero carbon technologies as they do so there will be a greater need for continuous product development to suit different applications and increase skilled labor to design and install them so as far as financial benefits for businesses businesses are driven by lower operational energy costs so improved profits and an increased social value, which is becoming more and more important, as much important as financial considerations. That brings me to my next question. With the construction landscape becoming increasingly complex, what strategies SIPSA is implementing to ensure continuous professional development and upskilling of its members, especially in the MEP sector? Uh, yeah, well, the easy one is SIBSI is introducing mandatory CPD on sustainability and net zero from the 1st of January 2024 for all of its corporate members. So all of its corporate members will be required to complete at least one semi-structured CPD on each of those topics and provide reflection on each. I also had the pleasure of launching our new SIBSI STEM ambassador scheme back in June and have challenged each of our regions to have 10 active STEM ambassadors by May next year so that we can attract more young people into one of our excellent university courses or apprenticeship programs and thus bring more people into our industry. And SIBSI is working closely with its members, industry and the government to inform and improve performance standards through the sharing of knowledge and innovation in the wider industry and delivering training and research that supports higher performing buildings. So I think this is another good thing for us to do. And finally, we are seeking to establish a new sustainability special interest groups, which will allow interested parties from all backgrounds, both members of SIBSI's and non-members to share, debate, and respond to each of these key industry themes. Well, there's a lot of initiatives, um, and definitely SIPSI is walking the talk, um, and that's what we need in the industry at the moment. So that brings me to my last question, Mr. President, which is, as we navigate through COP28 and the SIPSI UA week, could you provide a deeper insight into SIPSI's active involvement and then specifically, how is SIPSA uh, shaping the sustainability dialogue during this event? And what lasting impact does SIPSA aim to implement on both the regional and the international industry landscape post COP28? Yeah, uh, okay, thanks. So 
really excitingly is the launch of our TM65 UAE regional addendum for embodied carbon. So embodied carbon is the greenhouse gas emissions associated with the manufacture of products, its installation, maintenance, repair, replacement and end of life usage. The embodied carbon associated with building services design can be significant over the building's lifetime due to the materials that are used and high replacement rates. So although embodied carbon of construction material is well understood, the embodied carbon of building services equipment has been less researched and reported on due to their complex nature. So in 2021, SIBSI produced its first TM65 guide on how to assess embodied carbon of building services, products and equipment. And the purpose of this methodology is to help the industry take those first steps towards evaluating embodied carbon emissions in building services alongside the operational carbon emissions that we are more used to dealing with. So due to the lack of embodied carbon data on building services equipment, SIBSI has also seen a significant international interest to adapt and adopt TM65 and other reasons. So we're delighted we already published a guide to TM65 for local use in the UK, and we've worked with various SIBSI regions to produce local addendums for Australia, New Zealand, North America, and the UAE, which we'll be publishing this week. We really are quite excited about that. SIBSI UAE Young Engineers Award, which are so important to encouraging and inspiring the next generations of engineers who will ultimately deliver on our net zero agenda and secure their own inheritance. So I think we're really excited to be here and are happy to help SIBSI UAE in the pursuit of their objectives. Thank you so much for your responses. Uh, it was very insightful and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We, that was President Adrian. Uh, we'll be visiting the region uh, from 3rd December to 7th December. So do watch out for uh, our social media page for all the activities in that regard. And do follow us for the Tsipsa journey following the COP28, which will be both um, exciting on the regional aspect as well as on the, the international side. Thank you.